Hello guys, welcome back to another video. This is the second one in this series. In this one we are going to be talking about the Magic Lantern settings that I use to get the best video quality. Right out of the bat, I have given you guys a link in the description to the exact same build of Magic Lantern I'm using in this video. Go ahead, I would recommend you to go ahead, go down and download that and install it on yours before continuing so that everything is the same. While Magic Lantern is primarily the same or mostly the same across versions, there are some differences and that will matter. So once you've done that, come on back and we'll get started. We start by turning on the camera and we'll take a look at what you see. It looks pretty normal, then it'll go into the Magic Lantern. If you've used it at all, you'll be able to pick up the basics of what's going on here. Let's jump right into the settings by holding the down button that goes around and bam. What we're going to do is start in the video tab. You have presets along the top. That kind of just throws it into a yeah preset to get you started in the right place. If we click that, we get all the presets available. Realistically, you can ignore all of them below the MV1080. Why? Because 48 frames per second seems to be unrealistic. It never gets a good video, video footage and you have to set the resolution to the lowest possible and it still is very broken. And then on top of that, any of the others below it, the 2.5K or higher, is just impossible. The camera can barely make 720p recording, so it's not going to make 2.5. What it is, is that to be able to get continuous recording, it has to be about 720p. Anything higher will limit the amount of record time that you have. So that's the reality of it. Oh, and it did that. Okay. So we'll go with that preset right out of the gate. Then you go to raw video. Here you can see my resolution, which I have it set to the aspect ratio of 2.39. So you have resolution, you have aspect ratio, you have data format, which that's your bit depth, and your preview. Those are the four main settings you're gonna care about when you're getting started. So resolution, we can also see this down below here. This is also very key to pay attention to. What it's telling you down here is that at the current settings that I have set up, it can get continuous recording, which it does. And that's key. If you're legitimately going to be using this as a camera for recording video, continuous is a must. Yes, it can technically shoot 2.5K, but that's a joke. If you're getting like six seconds of recording, it's not worth mentioning. But yet people always go, ah, oh, 2.5K recording. Well, guess what? It's like three seconds. What are you talking about? To get realistic recording, this is going to be your resolution at this. If you're somebody like me who shoots anamorphic, two times anamorphic, you're going to be setting your aspect ratio to three by four. And then when I do that, I have to knock it back down to 28 by 960. This is telling you this weird yellow where it's kind of doesn't really know, but I can guarantee that it will be green and be able to record continuously. I don't know why that happens sometimes, but it seems rather inconsistent to whether it's going to be green and say you're a good to go or yellow and say maybe, don't know. Then we're going to go down to your bit depth. In this, you can see I have it set to 14 bit. You have six options, 14 bit, 12 bit, 10 bit. Well, then you have 14 bit lossless. What that really means, long story short, the lossless ones are compressing the image. In fact, even 12 and 10 bit are compressing the image. If you look down here, it's compressing the image slightly. Then it gets a lot more compressed as you go down. So to get true raw recording, set it to 14 bit. Some people will just say set it to this 11 bit. Well, that's compressing it. Not much, but enough to matter if you're here for raw recording 14 bit. Preview, you have re real time framing and frozen. I don't know what frozen is, but Framing means that if you're in a setting that it can't really support for your resolution or your aspect ratio, framing will show you the real time of what it's seeing, but that has a weird effect that's kind of almost delayed. Whereas real time shows you, tries to keep it at a realistic FPS. 
but that means that say you're set to the crop mode, the three times crop mode. Well, it will, in the real time, it'll crop five times. So you're not getting the real frame. So that's why you have framing. You generally want, want that on real frame, especially with the MCM rewire because it is able to use more of the sensor. Now, if we were to touch screen to go back, the next thing that is going to matter right here that you might see, whoops, whoops, messing that up, is bit depth. Down here, it gives you three options, off 12 bit, 10 bit, and 12 bit. I don't know exactly what this is, except that if you check it out, it says off equals 14 bit. So as far as I can tell, turning that on to 10 or 12 bit means it compresses the image. And if you're here for real raw recording, you're gonna turn that off like me. I've heard some people like Zeke call it a SD card hack. I don't know what that is supposed to mean, but I'm gonna guess that it's actually compressing the image in some way. As we go down, the next thing that's gonna become important is the shutter settings. In this case, your fine tuning and your shutter lock. This is pretty obvious. You're gonna to wanna to set your shutter speed to 50th, go back in here, set your fine tuning up to in the ballpark of plus 0.8, because that's gonna get you right there 48 frames per second, because if you look at your FPS, you're probably gonna change that to the cinematic 24, 23. Then you turn on shutter lock, that's so that when you're in the camera, you can't change the shutter by turning the back thing. So it attempts it, but then it goes right back to 48. That's what you're gonna want. Then, your next thing is going to be audio recording. This is not on by default. So you're gonna to wanna to go in here and enable it. You don't have a whole lot of audio settings, which, it, which is a shame since the EOS M has audio in through a 3.5 audio jack, but it does not give you a whole lot of settings as far as like levels, but you can monitor them up here in the top left. So that's pleasant. Then, we're going to go to here, your overlays. Your zebras, you're gonna set that to be 100%. What that means, what that's gonna do for you is if your exposure is going to be blown out or clip, the zebras will come on so that that allows you to know exactly where you need to be to get the correct exposure. Your magic zoom is going to be on. That's simply for focusing. You don't have to have it on, but that helps. I have it set to a half press, so when I half press, it does a zoom in of the center of the screen, which makes it much easier to focus the, the lens, especially if you're somebody like me using manual lenses. Next one is gonna be histogram. You're gonna want that on and your waveform. You're gonna want that on. Those are all things that are almost primarily needed to be able to shoot with this and get proper exposure because your key form of exposing is going to be checking your uh, zebras to make sure that you're at a well exposed image. Okay, now with all of that, we're set to shoot. These are the best settings that I could come up with throughout my testing to get the best quality image. Because while doing my testing, if you use that anything less than the 14 bit recording, the 14 bit data bit, it does lower the overall quality of the picture very slightly, but you primarily see it in the shadows. It's not a huge amount, but you do see it. If you're willing to have a lower bit depth, you can lower it and that, that can allow you to uh, put the re uh, resolution up a little bit, but again, we're here for raw recording. You can do 14 bit on top of that the upscaling algorithms that editing software like DaVinci uh, have is actually rather fantastic. And I have upscaled uh, this type of footage at 1280 by 960 up to 3840 and still gotten a very clean image. So while this, if you're shooting, if you're looking at it for as a two times anamorphic shooter, this is going to be about the settings you're going to be able to achieve realistically, but that doesn't mean it's going to be a bad image. That's what I was afraid of initially when I first got it. I was afraid with this type of resolution that it would look like garbage, but that's not true. It actually looks rather fantastic. 
Okay, so that's about the gist of it. I highly recommend playing around with the settings and just experimenting for yourself to get a little bit better, uh, to, to wet in your feet with the settings and how to use it. Thank you for watching. The next video that I'm going to be putting up is about shooting it and how to get a proper exposure with it that will allow you to get the best quality from Magic Lantern. Thank you for watching and have a great day.